Hello world, this is What's Up 2190 here, and today in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how to con remotely control any other computer from your own. So what you're going to want to do is go to this website here, www.realvnc.com slash download slash VRC, or click this link, and you can uh, get do download this program for all the different operating systems. Now there is both a free version and a paid version, which we'll be seeing later. So if you want to So basically, um, you'll have to install the software on both computers. So on both, so on both the compute, the machine you want to control remotely, and the uh, machine that you want to control it from, you'll have to come here and download the software for the respective operating system they have for Mac, Linux, Solaris, Windows and basically every operating system. So yes, it is possible to remotely control a, Mac, a Windows from a Mac or a Mac from a Windows using this software or any operating system from any other operating system using this software. So download for, download for, click, come here and click download on whatever operating system you're running the, uh, you're going to be installing the program on Just click accept, read these if you want, and then click accept, select that box and click download. Now, it, this, is, this is the page where it will start the download. So once you've got, once it's downloaded, you want to come back to this page and click on license. Computer's being a bit slow right now, but you know, sorry about that. I'm going to cancel it because I already have it. Now here's where you want, where you choose to either get the free version or the paid version. Obviously, the free, the paid versions have better security, and they have more, and they have more f features. Here you can read all the f the feet the features of the different paid versions right here on this page once you get to it. So. Obviously, the most expensive one has the best security and the most features. So you can choose which one you want. But for me, I'm going to click. F I'm going to click Get Key f under Free, right here. And then you'll just want to select this one and then put all your put all this. You only have to put a name. You can put a fake one if you want. An email address and then choose your country. You don't have to put a telephone number and then click continue and it'll show like a, like a serial key and yes you are going to need that so leave so leave that on screen and yes you're going to have to go through that process for both computers so once you've got the software installed on both of the computers on both the computer you're going to control and the computer you're going to control it from what you're going to want to do is just uh, is just oh, on the computer you want to control the, the computer you're controlling from go V open VNC viewer uh, 
Oh, and sorry, I forgot to mention. Once you've, when you go through the installer mode, you're going to, it's going to ask you to set up a, put up, put in your products key. And then during the installation, it's also going to ask you to set up a password. And this is the password that you'll have to type in to your VNC viewer software to be able to connect to the computer you, you want to remotely control. You can change that password by, if you want, by clicking on more click on options and then let's go here and click password and then you can change your change your password that computer needs to connect to you from there and yes you do need to have the VNC server software open in order for other the computer you're controlling on does have to have the VNC software running to for you to be able to control it I believe so, on top of that, what else you can do is you can also go back to options. You can also go up here and change the uh, the port you the port you're going to be using to connect the port you're going to be using for the software, but and. Uh, yeah, it, I would change it to either ports 80 or 443 because those are ports that need to, that'll basically bypass any uh, port blocking that like, I don't know, maybe a hotel network will have. And whereas ports 80 and 443 are two ports that need to be open or for you to even be able to connect to the internet at all. So yeah, yep. Just, I would say, change it to port 80 or 443 because then you shouldn't have to go through the port forwarding nonsense and all that. So, once you've done that, click apply and then OK. So, sorry. So once you're ready to connect, open up on the computer you want to control it. On the computer you want to control, open up the uh, open up the VNC server software, and it it should say ready for connections. And then write this IP address right here down. Write this. Sorry about. Sorry, but my, my screen recording software is being like super glitchy for some reason. I, 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 don't, I don't know why, but it is. So once you've got everything set up to connect and, you know, the VNC server software on the computer you're connecting to will say ready for connections. And then you just... And then you just... Uh, Type in that IP and then two colons. Type in the IP that appears right here. And if it if there are two colons and then a port number, type that in. And then click connect and it will now connect you and you'll be able to control view that, that computer screen 
and control it. I, I had included footage of me controlling a virtual machine I had set up, but unfortunately my screen recorder lost that. It's being like super weird today for some reason. So if this video seems a little weird, my apologies. But then, but yeah, just click connect and then it will connect you to, your, to that computer you're trying to control and you won't be able to do whatever you want. Hello world, <sighs> sorry. My screen recording software glitched out there for a second. So another way you could kind of control it, but not nearly to the extent of being able to see their screen or being able to just control their mouse, the, control the computer you want to control's mouse directly, is to use SSH if your, both of your computers are Macs. So what your so how you can set up SSH is on the computer you want to connect to open up the system preferences, go to sharing, and then check this one. The one that says remote this login, when it says on, check the box, and that will turn it on and it'll say something like this. So if you want, you can add users that you can connect that you can connect as on that machine on the that machine and then and then you can just click the little plus button here sorry and then you can just add that add a user from a list that'll pop up I'll show you you can select one of these users that'll appear right here then if you want to remove one so that you cannot log in as that user click minus or you can just click all users if you want to be able to sign in as anybody through SSH. Then if you want to block SSH logins again, all you have to do is come back here and uncheck this one. So once you've got that one turned in so you can log in through SSH, you just open terminal and, and type in the code that appeared right here. So I'm going to type SSH. Type the username and the IP address of this machine. Then press enter and it will connect. It might come up with some error message. Say it might come up with a warning saying that like it can't validate the host or something like that. It'll, that'll come up in just a minute. It might say that, but if it does come up with something like that, just choose yes, and it will remotely lock you into that computer through terminal. And then, once you've logged in, it'll you can pretty much just use terminal on that computer on your computer, and it will execute and it will execute the terminal commands on that computer that you're connected to. So if you wanted to open a website on that other computer once you've logged in through terminal, you can just type open website name or open or open file path. Here it says it timed out, but you should, shouldn't get that error with yours when you do it. It's just, do, it's just doing that because I'm connected to my, I'm trying to connect to my own machine. So if you want to, if you didn't, if you didn't write this code or copy this code on or something, or if you want to try to tr attempt to connect to another machine, you can try to find some of the, uh, you can type arp slash a and it will display the other IP addresses on the network along with yours. So I guess you could try if if you if you know who that if you see an IP address and you know who that whose computer that belongs to, then I guess maybe you could try. There's no this may not and there's it's only a possibility that it might work. 
because they may or may not have SSH turned on. Try typing, I don't know, username at uh, their IP, that IP address and then press enter. Username at, I don't know, their, their IP address. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. The, if you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I, I'll try to get back to you, but that's not a guarantee. Um, this is What's Up 2190, and I'm signing off. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next video.